A 20-year-old Florida woman was found guilty of second-degree murder for fatally stabbing her romantic rival in a fight in which the two engaged. Following her split from Josh Wade, Rachel Wade, the teen who killed her rival Sarah Luderman, developed a bitter feud with him after she killed her rival. The situation got worse as time went on, as Camacho started seeing Luderman, which made Wade angry. During the first six months that Luderman lived with Josh, the police called him at least six times to ask about public fights between Josh and Camacho. She also got into a fight with the mother of Josh's child. Joshua struck Luderman in the face, but Luderman didn't file a report. Wade called Luderman and left him a bad voicemail. Because of their rivalry, it became more volatile. Wade says that Sarah would show up at an Applebee's where Wade worked in order to taunt her. The fight would go on until Luderman died. It took Luderman a while to get to where Wade was, but she did it anyway. It looked like Wade's head was going down and Wade was flailing her arm with a knife at her. Luderman was stabbed, which led to her death. Both Rachel and Sarah didn't like each other, and they saw each other as a threat but they were more alike than either of them would have liked. They grew up in the same small neighborhood in Pinellas Park, and they both went to school there. People who worked hard and cared about their kids raised them. In school, they went to the same school and walked the same halls. Both of the girls liked the beach, movies, and dogs. Both girls were blonde and very outgoing. They both had wide eyes and made a lot of noise when they laughed. Sarah Luderman was a good student who rarely missed her 11 p.m. class or curfew. A tough girl who loves her dad. Rachel Wade was small and flirty, which made boys notice her. In 10th grade, she dropped out of school and got her GED. She worked as a waitress and earned enough money to rent her own apartment. The title she gave herself on her MySpace page was Independent Chic. When Rachel and Sarah were together, the thing they both talked about the most was Josh Camacho. This person has black eyes and a long nose. His wide lips were curled into a sneer, a pair of dark jeans fell low on his slim hips. Josh had a lot of fun posing for cell phone portraits. He flexed his biceps, waved a gun, and showed off the tattoo on his back that reads Camacho. While he was seeing Sarah and Rachel, he was also seeing a third girl, whom he referred to as my baby mama. They had a son together, and he spent a lot of time with the baby, but he didn't pay any child support. While in high school, Josh worked at Chick-fil-A and Polo Tropical. His life didn't get better after high school, he never went to college and didn't work or drive. At 19, he lived with his family, except when he talked a girl into letting him stay the night. A silly string was used to start the fight over this boy, but it quickly turned into profane rants and ended in tragedy. Text and voicemail messages, cell phone pictures, web postings, and reams of documents will all be used to tell the story. Teenage girls want to be liked, they want to be unique, and their feelings are often too strong for them to handle. They don't feel in charge of anything, and they want to be in charge of their lives. When they finally feel like they belong to someone or someone belongs to them, it all comes down to ownership. A love triangle can turn into a dispute over who owns what. It's also well known that girls don't often kill each other. The girl-on-girl -girl assault has risen, but homicide by women is still the rarest crime. Boys are more likely to be killed if they commit other crimes, like robbery or drug dealing. But when a girl kills someone, it is very personal for her. Girls are much more likely to kill over relationships like their parents, siblings, and boyfriends. A teenager gets angry when another girl feels like she's invading her space or when someone disrespects her. These are the things that bother them the most. Josh Camacho might have known this. Though he later said, if you love me, you'll fight for me. 
This is how Sarah felt about being with Josh in April 2009. Rachel and Josh, were the two people that Rachel wanted to be with. It was a warm spring night when one of the girls was in jail, facing life in prison. The other had died in the street, just a few blocks from home. It was the same house that Sarah Ludeman lived in all her life, a single-story lime stucco with a wide porch that was lined with wind chimes. Her parents had relocated from New York to Florida in order to stay warm and safe. Sarah's mom is a nurse who helps with surgery. Her father, Charlie, is a taxi driver, and works for the city government. Sarah was her dad's best friend. It was karate classes, lightning games, and Keith Urban shows that he took her to see. When she was in his cab, she turned up the radio and sang country songs. Friends since preschool, Sarah loved to sing and dance. She was always making up these crazy moves, pretending she was Britney Spears. Rachel grew up with her older brother in a new brown house with a pool, and they lived there. Her father drives a truck, and her mother works as an assistant teacher at a school for young children. Rachel was a happy child. She liked to read, play princesses, and draw Disney characters. She was always making friends and getting attention. All the girls wanted to be like her, and all the boys liked her. Rachel was in elementary school when a new boy came to her class, and she didn't know him. It had been a while since his family moved to Florida, but now they were there. His father was from New York and his mother was from the Dominican Republic, so he was born in the United States. He had six brothers and a sister, and he had a lot of families. And had dark, curly hair, too. Sarah started high school at Tarpon Springs so that she could go to school there to become a vet. It took her more than an hour to get there by bus. During the day, other girls had boyfriends walk with them. But when Sarah was 16, she didn't have a boyfriend, and her dad was always at the bus stop. In the summer after 10th grade, Sarah and Amber went to a lot of movies and ate Chick-fil-A. He came out of the back on his break one afternoon. His scent was like French fries. Amber said that he waved to Sarah, which made Sarah happy. Then he smiled, and said, she just fell in love with him right away. A few weeks after telling her parents, Sarah told them that not everyone agreed with her that she didn't want to be a veterinarian after all. As it turned out, she didn't know what she was going to do. Except for moving to Pinellas Park. Sarah was dancing and having fun with her friends and dad's cab. At the same time, Rachel was busy with the boys. By the time she was in high school, her social life had trumped school. She began to argue with them, saying that she didn't need their rules. During a fight with their father, the police came to Rachel's house when she was 15. She had to be home at 10 p.m., but she wanted to stay out all night. Often, Rachel would sneak out of her bedroom window. She slept in strangers' cars, on lounge chairs at apartment pools, and on the floor. In the school parking lot, police found her with a 19-year-old in a car, she was only 15 when they found her and the man. At the beginning of her sophomore year, Rachel ran away 14 times and dropped out of school. When her parents took her to council and drove her to work at a doggy daycare, they told her that was what she should do. She met Josh at a party, she hadn't seen him in years. He looked great, and Chick-fil-A, is where she met him. Josh and Sarah had sex all summer, it was only in the fall of that year that he didn't even look at her. He would just look away from her, and tip his chin at the same time. In November, they finally met. However, he would never hold her hand, or walk with her, or say I love you to her in front of other people. When the two of them were alone, he was all over her. Sarah's first kiss, first boyfriend, first everything, he made her feel beautiful and important. That's why some of her friends were afraid. In the first place, 
it was when Sarah started to wear pants. Sarah was always in shorts, even in the winter. Josh didn't want other men to see her legs, he told her who she could hang out with and who she could talk to. Sarah started to spend all of her time with him. She was so afraid that she was going to lose him that she lost herself. She knew he was taking care of her, but she never thought about leaving him. If she had had other boyfriends, she would have been able to understand how it feels to break up and move on. But if your first love is at 18, things get crazy. To keep Sarah from getting too close to Josh, he had Josh over for dinner and took him to the ball games. To keep a close eye on him? Until now, Sarah had never been in any trouble. In the first six months that she was with Josh, the police interviewed her six times, all about public fights. She and Josh yelled at each other when they were at a stop sign. She yelled at Yoshi's baby mama in the parking lot of the movie theater when she came to pick him up. Sarah told Josh that Josh had hit her in the face, and Josh said he did it. When her parents asked her to file a police report, Sarah said she didn't want to do it. In the next police report, Rachel's name was also there. Rachel and Josh were together and apart for a long time. She knew that he had a lot of other girls, the reason they kept breaking up was because of that. Rachel's picture on MySpace showed her lying on her back, with her bright hair circling her head like a halo around her head. As soon as she turned 18, she got a job at Applebee's and a place of her own. Josh started the sleepover, and that made a difference between them, and she got attached. In a few months, Rachel saw a picture of Josh with another girl on MySpace. As if she owned him, the tall, big-boned blonde was beaming as if she had him. Sarah Ludeman is the name of the person who put the name on the picture. Rachel wrote to Josh on June 17, 2008. We first met, and I fell in love. Since then, things have changed. You have called me names and slept with other people. I deserve so much better. Soon, there was a comment under Rachel's post. It said that Josh had found something better. Sarah gave it to us. Rachel somehow got Sarah's phone number, and left a voicemail message. Sarah was not scared. She and her friends started eating at Applebee's, where they sat in the same section as Rachel and started to talk to each other. They would make fun of her, and bump into her while she was holding a lot of heavy trays. Rachel made more phone calls to Sarah and called her fat and sad. Why would he want you? Why not me? During the night, a car pulled up next to Rachel at the Taco Bell. Sarah drove by Rachel's apartment and said, come fight me. Sarah told police that Rachel called her 20 times in two hours, threatening her, and she told them that when cops talked to Rachel, she said that Sarah had sent her bad emails. Nobody hit anyone, so the cops let it go. Sarah's dad thought it would all be over soon. Technology made all this easier and made things worse, but it was both good and bad for us. A voicemail or text message can let you say anything you want without having to face the person you're insulting. You can deliver your rant right away, and the person you're insulting can replay it again and again, reopening the wound each time you do so. When a feud is played out on the internet, where everyone can see it, it only makes people angrier. The public challenge can't be ignored, said the girl, who wants to fight back because she's hurting, and I want her to hurt, too. It was April 14, 2009. Sarah's eyes were swollen again when her dad came to pick her up from school. She had been crying every day for two weeks. It didn't work. He tried to hug her, but she pulled away. In the last six months, she had dropped 30 pounds. Sarah logged on to MySpace as soon as she got home and saw that Rachel had been on the site. I'm in a good mood because I love my boyfriend, Sarah texted Josh. 
It was 1.06 pm when she wrote this, there's nothing Josh cares about. You get mad at me all the time for everything, but you don't care when she puts up or says anything. No matter what I do, she's always better. Sarah and her movies aren't something Rachel knew about. She was at her house, waiting for Josh to come over and see her. In the dark, Rachel was walking her dog when she saw Sarah in her mom's minivan and heard a car honk. She later told police that she saw her, but didn't tell them what she saw. Keep away from my man. Rachel told Javier that she didn't want to be alone and asked if she could come over. She took her purse, opened a kitchen drawer, and found a steak knife. Sarah didn't think she was good enough for Josh because she didn't have a job or a car. She told her friends that she still had a curfew. Rachel was so much more beautiful, she thought. If he didn't want her anymore, who would it be? She was so much more beautiful than Sarah. As a bonus, she had known Josh for a long time. Josh knew her true self, and she knew him. During the time Sarah was supposed to be home, Josh and Sarah were playing we at Josh's sister's house when headlights came through the window. Josh knew that the car was Rachel's red satin. When the headlights went out, Sarah watched Rachel drive away. Sarah told Josh goodbye just before midnight. As she was leaving, Josh's sister and her friend asked for a ride to McDonald's. So Sarah put them in the minivan, and took them to McDonald's. At a stop sign, Sarah saw her friend and said, guess who I saw. She said, Rachel? At Javier's house, a few blocks away, she was. In the two-lane street, Sarah sped up. Her cell phone rang, and she recognized the number and put it on the speakerphone. I'm going to kill you, Rachel screamed. You and your Mexican boyfriend. There were two boys standing outside a white house talking to Rachel's car. Sarah slammed on the brakes when she saw them. She climbed out of her car in her flip-flops and ran to Rachel. A steak knife pierced Sarah's heart for the second time. By the time Sarah got back to the minivan, Yoshi's sister had climbed out. Get back in, Sarah screamed, we have to go. She fell to the ground in the driver's seat and tried to find her cell phone. Her hands were covered in her own blood. She called, Josh. When her phone rang, Rachel threw the knife on the roof of a neighbor's house. She was shocked. In the end, Josh ran two blocks to Sarah's house and told her father that she had been in a fight. Then, they- Hey, what kind of knife is it? Just like something you'd get out of a, like a butcher block kind of thing? What does it look like? Can you describe it? It just had a black handle on it and, and it was about that long. A serrated edge? Yeah. Okay. When you had it with you, you had it in the car with you, right? And you drove over to Javier's house. Why did you have it with you? Because they said that they were going to find my car and follow me and the sheet threatened to kill okay. me. So you, are you telling me? That you had it for some form of protection? Yeah, because I, I know they're going to jump me. I know Josh's family. Okay. Josh has hit me before. Josh's brother has threatened to hit me before. Do you have a gun or anything else? No. Okay, so that was your form of protection. Okay, so when you got in the car tonight to go over to their house, you had it in your hand. I mean, you brought it with you. When you were arguing with Josh, you had it, is that right? That was in my seat. Okay, and did they tell you to put it away? Javier and Dustin didn't? No, Javier asked who I had it, and he said, do you really think, I told him, so like, if they see it, they'll leave me alone. Hopefully they just go away. Right. And he was like, because I guess Josh has come to his house with a gun before. Mm -hmm. He said that what, they don't scare them, and it wasn't going to do anything to them. And I just, that was kind of the end of the conversation. He said, you know, they're not going to stop at anything. Okay. I had it out when Sarah got there hoping that she would just like walk away from me or see it and think that I was actually going to do something and they both came after me. All right, Rachel, walk me through it. You're sitting there, they pull up, Sarah gets out, you go out to the street where she's at, okay, because she's right in front of the car, okay, to the front of her car. 
What happened when you encountered her? She just started screaming at me, and she laughed at me and said I wasn't going to do anything, and then she realized that I had a knife, and she kind of backed up, and then she started swinging on me anyways, and I just... When you say she started swinging on you, what was she, she doing? She started punching me and Fla lifting me. Flailing at you? Yeah. Punching? And I saw Janet coming around. And where were you holding the knife at the time? I just had it out to the side, and then I saw Janet coming at me, and I saw the other girl come around in the back end of the car. Mm -hmm. And they were all screaming at me, and Janet was telling me that I was crazy and I wasn't going to do anything, and then, like, she said that she wished I would stab her. Who said that? Um, Janet. Said, I wish you'd stab me? Yeah, she said, I bet you won't stab me, I wish you would. And, um, when Sarah was hitting me, I went to hit her, and I really did not even stab her. Okay. I'm not trying, I'm not going to kill somebody. Tell, she, tell me how it happened. So she was hitting me, and when I went to hit her back, I had put one of my hands up, and I had, like, I tried to hit her back and keep my hands in front of me. This is the knife. Show and me how you were holding it. Back. Okay. But and now, if, if I'm Sarah and I'm in front of you, what were you doing with the knife? How I did you I had it out to the side, and she started swinging on me, and then when I went to put my hands out, she was swinging on me, and I tried to defend myself from her, and then Janet came at me from the side. Mm -hmm. And I guess, I, like, I did not mean to stop her at all. How many times did you stab her? I guess once. Okay, do you know where it hit her at? No, I don't. I didn't see anything. I had both of them coming at me and Sarah hitting me to begin with. Okay. After you stabbed her, did she go to the ground, fall to the ground? I didn't see that. Okay. She was screaming at Janet after that. She was screaming, Janet, get in the car. Your kids. That's all she would say. And then I didn't see her. And yeah. I still heard her yelling her name. That's all I heard was Janet, Janet, get in the car. Okay. So, Sarah didn't have any weapon with her at all, right? She wasn't carrying a bat or a gun or a knife that you saw, right? Okay. And you went out and you met her in the street, came up to her side of the car where she was getting out of. Is that right? I stepped in, like, in the front of my car, yeah. And then when she started screaming at me, and then Janet started coming around the side, so I walked over a little bit further. But initially it was just you and Sarah because you said Sarah was, and is that how your lip got hit? I think Janet did that. I don't know. Sarah kind of hit me in, like, the side of my head more than anything, okay. in my stomach once. But when Sarah was hitting me, I saw Janet come this way, and the other girl got out of the other side of the car and walked around from the back towards me. Okay. So after that was done, and I know you said you were being dragged around by Janet and whatnot, when you went back up to the house, what did you do with the knife once you had it? I threw it. Where? To, like, towards the neighbor's house. If you're facing Javier's yeah. house? to the left side, just in the grass, over the fence, what? Threw it up, I don't know where it landed. Up on the roof? I don't know if it was on the roof or in their backyard or okay. And how long would you say the knife is? Something like that. Um, then you went up and sat on the porch. And they took off. No, oh, Janet kept coming after me. Janet, like, followed me and followed me and kept and coming after me. they stayed there then? Okay. Do you know what my job is? Hmm? What? To take care of things like this and make sure things like this don't happen. Well, I understand that. That's, I mean, that's overall police's job. But my specific job, do you know what it is? figure out the details of Well, that's part of it. You're correct. My real title is, okay, is I'm a homicide detective, okay? They called me because of the serious nature of her injuries, okay? She was stabbed, all right? She was stabbed twice because before I came here to talk to you, I went down and saw her at the hospital, okay? She stabbed twice in the chest, and she has no other injuries on her whatsoever. Okay. What I need to know from you is, is why. I, I, I understand that you had a knife because you thought you'd scare them, okay? But that isn't working. So why does somebody like you go one versus three? You go out into the street and meet them. Why didn't you just run in the house and call the police? tired of it. They come after me all the time. Okay. I don't want it. I did not. So you wanted it to end and be over with. Yeah, but right? I have no intentions whatsoever on stabbing her. I have a great life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a job. I have my own house. I have my own car. I have everything. And I just wanted it to end. That's why I told Josh I was done. 
And I didn't want them to come. I really did. I was waiting. I called my friend Agla that I was with earlier, and I told her to come pick me up. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, you know, you should really take your car because if you don't take your car, they're going to do something to it. And at that point, I don't care. Mm -hmm. That's just my car. Why did you change shirts? I didn't change shirts. My, well, what you had on? my other shirt. Janet ripped off my shirt. Okay. So that got ripped off? Right. Yeah, but I did not want the, to have The necklace her. you have, is that yours? Yeah. Does that belong to you? Yeah. Did you see if Sarah was wearing a necklace at the time? No, I didn't. Did you take anything from her? No, I did not. There were rings in my front seat, but I don't think they were mine. And somebody mentioned that there were rings in my front seat. I do have rings in my car, but I don't remember being in my seat. Okay. Janet got in my car, but I don't know what she did. And so I'm clear. I, I understand that Janet was, you know, beating on you as well. But initially, it's you and Sarah. Javier, Dustin were out in the street fighting with you guys at all. Josh wasn't there. No, Josh was well, I heard Josh screaming, like, as the cops were pulling up. I heard Josh and his brother. And me and Sarah were done fighting. Josh called me and threatened me and said he was going to come shoot me with his gun. Why? Because of the fact that his sister called and said that we were fighting and that was I hit her. Was it the fact that his sister called, called and said that you stabbed her? I don't know what she said to him. I guess because she said that I hit her and that I stabbed Sarah. I don't know what she said. When every, I, I, This is what I'm having a problem with. You're going to have to help me out with this because when everybody got there, Sarah is laying in the middle of the street with the stab woman. How do you not see that? I didn't get Janet came after me. Like, she physically came after me and dragged me around his front yard. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see anything. Okay. I just didn't see. Like, I saw Sarah sitting, like, on the edge of the seat of the front of the van. Mm -hmm. And she was screaming at Janet to get in the car. And then after that, Janet just came after me. She would not stop. And Javier and Dustin kind of, like, followed us, trying to, like, I don't know, intimidate her maybe to leave me alone. And, she, like, I went to dial 911. She knocked my phone out of my hands, and she just kept dragging me around the front yard. I couldn't see anything. Well, I know you told me that you were upset, and you just wanted this to be over because they have been harassing you, obviously. Was tonight kind of just the final straw? Is that what the deal was? I just, I want, I didn't want anything to do with any of them. Right. I didn't want them to call me. But you brought a them. knife with you for because a reason. I, because they said they were going to follow me okay. to my apartment. But you also said that you had had enough of it. And when I asked you why you just didn't run into the house when they come pulling up in a van, your response to me was what? I don't know. I'm tired of running and being scared. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't. My parents did not well, raise me that night. way. Okay. I know that, but you I did not have any intention on stabbing her. So you had the knife in your hand. How do you think that blade came in contact with her? You said she was, was like trying to trying hit you. To hit her back. Okay, well how do you hit somebody with a knife in your hand? You're gonna have to show me. So I was just swinging was at her. I just had it and I was swinging at her. She kept hitting me and I just started swinging with, back. With the knife? With both hands. Okay. Yes. Show me how you were you overhand or was, was it like both this or what? Everywhere. You're I just didn't, all yeah, over. Because that's all she was doing to me and I saw both of the other girls coming after me. Okay. <coughs> did you um did you give a couple chance to call? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the next thing that that you need to that you need to understand, Rachel. Okay, when I was down at the hospital, okay, I saw where she was stabbed at. Okay, it looks like she has two stab wounds. All right, the next piece of information that you need to know is that she is dead. Oh my God! Okay, she died as a result of these stab wounds that she had at Northside Hospital. Alone. All this over Josh? I just didn't want them to terrorize me anymore. They follow me everywhere. They come to my job. They come to my house. Well, she's not, not going to follow you anymore because she's dead now. drove to the street where the minivan was still running. Sarah was lying on the ground next to the paramedics. He ran to her, but the police pulled him back. 
He knew she was dead, he knew there was nothing anyone could do. He took Josh to the hospital, but Josh didn't want to see Sarah. When Sarah's parents saw her body, Josh was gone. During their investigation, police found Rachel on the bench outside Javier's house. She had been attacked by Josh's sister and had a cut lip. She told them that she had been scratched on the back and hit on the sole of her shoe. After a while, Rachel told them about the knife. She said that Sarah had been harassing her for a long time. She knew she was going to be attacked, so she tried to protect herself. When Rachel saw Sarah's ambulance go by, she didn't know how badly she was hurt. When the detective said that, Rachel didn't seem ready for the news. There were tears in Rachel's eyes, and she couldn't stop them. As time goes on, Sarah Ludeman's parents have kept her room as a shrine to their daughter. The only thing that changed, was that Yoshi's pictures were thrown away by Sarah's dad, but everything else is the same. Rachel Wade has been in the Pinellas County Jail for 15 months. Her trial for second-degree murder is set to start on Tuesday. Rachel's lawyer says she acted in self-defense. She could spend the rest of her life in prison. The funeral of Sarah's mother didn't let Josh Camacho come. He hasn't seen or written to Rachel, and he doesn't even know her. Cops think he was taken away by his parents and sent to New York. In response to a phone call from Josh's mother, he doesn't live here anymore, but she wouldn't say where Josh was. In this case, a teenage love triangle turns deadly. When two teenage girls are jealous of each other, they lash out at each other on cell phones and on the internet. The feud, which was mostly played out in cyberspace, led to a deadly face-to-face -face fight that killed both of them. On September 3, 2010, Rachel Wade was sentenced to 27 years in state prison. Wade maintained that she acted in self-defense, and appealed her case. She is housed at Lowell Correctional Institution. In a March 2011 interview, she said that she believed that social media played a major part in the rivalry and murder. She stated that social media gives people the ability to say whatever they want with very little consequence. Thank you so much for watching.